Um, this is a pretty special day for me. Yesterday, I received my um, certification as a brain health coach, and I am now also a licensed brain trainer through the Amen University and in the Amen, Dr. Daniel Amen. So it's pretty exciting for me. Um, the reason I talk about that is because when I wrote my book, Don't Let the Memories Fade, I was focused on the idea of preventing dementia because of what had happened to my mom. My mom died with dementia a little over a year ago. And her journey is what inspired me to do everything I could to protect my own health and to share the information I learned as I was going through that process with others to help them prevent dementia. But it turns out that all the stuff I was doing and teaching is not just about preventing dementia. It's not just about caring for your memories or making sure you don't have brain fog or trouble concentrating. Everything that I've been talking about for the last number of years boils down to just good brain health, good physical health, good emotional health, and good spiritual health. All those together have to be in sync so that we have better lives, healthier lives, happier lives, better relationships, more success. So doing these courses and the reason I even talk about graduating is because it's a confirmation that it's not just about preventing something. What we're doing here by looking after our guts and our brains is protecting our mental health and our futures. So anyway, it's a pretty exciting time for me. And even with technical glitches on Facebook and all of the other things that happen, hey, it's an opportunity to learn and more learning is good for the brain, right? So um, today I'm here because several of my folks in the Prevent Dementia um, Facebook group, which I have now renamed to Boosting, Boost Your Brain, Prevent Dementia, um, they asked for help with gut issues because a big part of gut health of brain health is gut health. We have to have a healthy gut in order to have a healthy brain. So I've put together a course, but in, in advance of that, I'm also going to share just a short little, I think it's 13 or 14 minutes, a little webinar that I did or a PDF or a PowerPoint describing the things that you should maybe keep an eye out for and and watch in your own gut in how you're feeling because that could be an indicator of other issues in the brain in the body certainly heart issues many things can go wrong if your gut's not healthy so i'm going to share with you right now this uh, and i'll be back after you watch this better gut better brain um, presentation Hello there. Welcome to Build a Better Gut to Build a Better Brain. My name's Kate Kunkel, and I'm the creator of Brain Health Matters, which is a series of online educational events, programs, courses, and of course, my book, Don't Let the Memories Fade. And everything that I offer is here to help you look after your brain to protect your memories. Today, we're going to be talking about what the gut has to do with your brain, and frankly, just about everything. In fact, many people call the gut the second brain. And this has been known for a long time, although not recognized until recently in modern medicine, but Hippocrates even said that all disease begins in the gut. So how do you know if you have an unhealthy gut? It's pretty obvious if you have a lot of stomach issues and digestion issues, you can figure out mm, my stomach's not so good. But what does that really mean to the gut and the microbiome that is so important to everything in our bodies? So here are a few of the symptoms, as I mentioned, digestive issues. And that includes constipation, gas, bloating, pain.
pain, cramps, butterflies? Do you have trouble losing weight even though you're starving and counting calories? Or do you just feel sick or weak? And how's your skin? Do you have a lot of acne or eczema or kind of dull skin, or maybe it's really crepey? How are your joints and muscles? Do they feel achy and stiff or do they feel supple? And also a big question to determine the health of your gut. Have you taken antibiotics in the last year? Because unfortunately, antibiotics play havoc with our gut microbiome. But what does that mean for the brain? How can you tell if your gut is unhealthy and what does that mean for your brain? Well, do you have trouble sleeping or do you feel like with no energy or tired? Do you have brain fog, feel like you're just wading through the day or do you have trouble with your moods? Or are you grouchy all the time? Memory is a big issue too. Are you forgetting appointments or people's names or the names of things or where your keys are? All of these things can be an indicator of an unhealthy gut. And an unhealthy gut probably is related to a microbiome that is out of balance. You could have a very low number of species of bacteria, or you could have more bad guys than good guys. Either way, your gut can be considered unhealthy. And that can lead to a leaky gut. What does a leaky gut mean? I'm sure you've heard this term before. Basically, a leaky gut happens when one of these triggers, which could be inflammation, it could be drugs, it could be blood sugar issues, there are many things that could cause the connections between the cells that line our gut to be broken. Our gut lining is only one cell thick, and it doesn't take a lot to break that, those connections between those cells. So it can be either the connections between the cells where these bad guys get in, or it could actually damage the cells and break them apart. Either way, the triggers could be going from here inside your gut into the bloodstream. And where do they go from the bloodstream? Your brain. Leaky gut is a leaky brain. but it's not hopeless. There are many things you can do to fix a troubled gut and to heal a leaky one. Both of those will help you build a happier, better brain. So the, one of the biggest culprits is sugar. Sugar is just downright not good for you. All of those packaged cookies, Pretzels, candy, sugar, donuts, they all work together to reduce the good bacteria in your gut and they feed the bad guys, which puts your gut microbiome way out of whack. And that imbalance links to inflammation. And that's how that leaky gut happens. So that leads to mood problems problems controlling yourself. And sugar, besides the fact that it inspires inflammation, also messes with how our neurons fire. So think of it, think of an electrical system where the electrical main is not modulated properly. And all of this power spikes through and destroys the connections in the wires in your house. Well, sugar can do the same thing to the neurons in our brains. But most people, well, many people anyway, are addicted to sugar. It's actually as addictive as cocaine. So we do have a sweet tooth, 
but we can satisfy that sweet tooth without ingesting processed sugar, fructose, high fructose corn syrup. Oh, the names, the names they give to sugar is incredible. But instead, you can use dates or bananas or unsweetened applesauce. So it's not a lost cause. You can say so long to sugar and still be happy <laughs> because I know a lot of people really have a, a lot of trouble getting rid of sugar. The other thing that really impacts our gut is the inflammation from dairy. And I know that just recently there have been a couple of studies that come out saying that people who eat fermented cheeses actually have less likelihood of developing dementia. So those are good quality fermented cheeses like blue cheese and that sort of thing. Most people do not eat that. And most people's cheese is filled full of the antibiotics that come from the poor cows that are fed antibiotics because they're kept in such cramped conditions that otherwise they would get sick. So generally speaking, dairy is not a good idea. Inflammation is the end result of pretty well all dairy products. And what does that cause? Leaky gut. So what do we do? Because many people really feel they can't give up their cheese. I'm here to tell you as someone who absolutely used to love cheese that you can give up cheese. I know it sounds crazy, but you can. I make amazing dairy-free cheeses. And I'll talk about those in the course that I'm doing on gut health. But you can do nut milks, you can do dairy-free cheeses. Organic oat milk is very popular these days, but make sure it's organic and we'll get to the reason for that next. Going grain-free, Dr. Perlmutter, many people have talked about the dangers of grains for inflammation. It actually disrupts the balance of gut bacteria, and that can lead to the leaky gut that we talked about before. Also, that inflammation helps or inhibits absorption of the nutrients that we need. If you're inflamed, your, your gut can't utilize those nutrients that are in your food. So you want to do anything you can to avoid that inflammation. And it also interferes with the synthesis of neurotransmitters. Those are the things that send messages in our brain. So we want to try not to inhibit those. That's very important. So what can you do instead of having bread and bagels and, and even baked goods? I make a lot of things with yucca flour or almond flour. Um, you can use lentil tortillas instead of regular wheat tortillas. And of course, corn has its own set of problems because of the genetic mod modification. But you can also use vegetable pasta noodles. So you make noodles out of zucchini or carrots. There are lots of things you can do to avoid grain. Avoid processed foods. It is absolutely essential to avoid processed foods, especially those with artificial sweeteners like aspartame or Splenda or any of those and food coloring. Food coloring is just simply not good. It's even, they say about red dye number 40, that's only one. There are many, many more. MSG, that's a neurotoxin. Aspartame is a neurotoxin. They directly affect, the, affect your gut and your brain. So see all those colors that we have there on that image? Instead of getting them from packages, get them from the colors of the rainbow in your whole natural foods like carrots and beets and blueberries and strawberries and raspberries and red cabbage and green kale. You get the idea. And finally, this is something that people don't talk about very much. But you know, you see people using these acid reducing drugs because they're getting heartburn or whatever, because they're eating foods that are not good for them. Well, number one, our gut is pretty smart and it tells us when it's not getting fed properly, when it's being mistreated. And if you need to use acid reducing drugs 
to feel more comfortable after a meal, that's probably because your gut is telling you that's not the meal you should be eating. Acid reducing drugs, painkillers, many other drugs are terrible for your stomach, for your gut. So rather than popping some acid reducing drug, figure out what food is causing the problem and eliminate that. So this is just a little hint of all the things that affect your gut. But it's a good start to, to really pay attention to these and to take the steps that I suggested in this presentation, because everything starts in the gut. When your gut's happy, your brain's happy, and most of your other organs too. So I'd like to invite you to join with me in a very cool program that I've been working on. The pilot program for 14 days to a healthier gut and a happier brain starts on May 17th. This is only available to members of the Boost Your Brain and Prevent Dementia Facebook group and my current Brain Health Matters clients. Space is very limited because this is a pilot program and I want to get lots of feedback from you folks who join me so that we can see how well you can follow the protocols and what can happen, how much better you can feel. So it's, it's kind of an interactive thing here. It's not just a one-way educational event. You're gonna help me too. So what are you gonna learn? Simple tweaks you can make to your diet and they won't just improve your digestive health, but they'll also help lift that brain fog and improve your memory. We're also going to learn how to use common foods to heal your gut and boost your brain power. And we're gonna pay special attention to the care and feeding of your microbiome. So this pilot program for this offer only starting May 17th is $47. Again, it's only available to members of my Facebook group and to my current Brain Health Matters clients. If you're interested, write to me at the address below kate.l.kunkel at gmail.com or message me through the Facebook group. I'd love to have you join me. Let's see what we can do to make that healthier gut and happier brain. So I do hope that was of value to you, that you have information there that you can act on right now. I know that getting rid of sugar is one of the hardest things for many, many people, but I can't stress enough how important it is. And you don't have to do it all at once, right? I always say anything you do is better than nothing. And everything you do is something. So every little step, you know, a, a long journey is made of a million steps, right? So just take one little step at a time. So what are you going to get rid of this week? Pick one thing that you normally eat that's sugary or highly processed. One of those things and just eliminate it this week. Next week, add another one. I'd love to hear uh, in the post on the Facebook group. I'm going to be posting this over to the group in a moment. I'd love to have your comments on what you think you can dump this week or what you can add. Can you add something green and crunchy, something colorful that will help your gut? Okay, that's it for me today. Kate Kunkel signing off, and I will see you again next week, one way or another.